I've been a videographer for five years at Bike Radar, and in that time, I have filmed and edited a lot of videos about bikes. I've also used a lot of cycling kit. Some of it is good, some of it not so good. So just like Ruben's video, which came out a couple of weeks ago, I'm gonna talk through the five best bits of kit that I've used in the last five years. However, unlike Ruben's video, I am not leaving Bike Radar, so you're gonna have to put up with me for the time being. And remember, if you wanna hear more from us at Bike Radar, whether that's reviews, features, or anything else we might be interested in, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm gonna start my top five with something big and very expensive. It's my 2018 long-term bike, a specialized S-Works Epic. I've ridden plenty of fancy hardtails in my time, but so far, none of them have matched the pure performance and wow factor of the S-Works Epic. As you'd expect, it is very light, and my size large weighed nine kilos with pedals, but that didn't mean that it couldn't take a beating throughout a whole year, training, racing, and commuting. The geometry is what I call conservatively progressive. That means for the size large, it's got a 69.8 degree head angle, a 74 degree seat angle, and 430 millimeter chain stays. That means for an XC bike, it's not crazy slack, but it's also not crazy steep. It's kind of just about right for the marathon racing that I like doing. The Rover wheels that come on the bike are also really nice. They are plenty wide and plenty stiff enough for anything my svelte frame has been able to throw at them throughout the last year or so. Obviously, the sticking point on this bike is the price. And in 2019, this bike is going to cost you £7,750, which is insanely expensive, especially when you consider that other brands offer a similarly spec bike for a bit less. But if you can afford it, you will not be disappointed with this bike. As I've already said, I gave it a really hard time with many hours of training, racing, all my commuting on it throughout 2018, and it kept coming back for more. If I could afford it, it would be really hard to pass it up. We're sticking with mountain biking for now, and my next product is Schwalbe's Racing Ralph tyre. Now, while the Racing Ralph is still available, the specific tread pattern I'm talking about has, I think, been discontinued, but that doesn't stop me absolutely loving this tyre. Why? Well, they seem to be able to handle everything I've thrown at them since first trying a pair way back in 2012. The shoulder tread is pretty generous, and despite it being a really fast rolling tyre, it also works well in the mud. This is really important for me as during a lot of the marathon races I like doing, the day might start off dry, but then you know, part of the course could be really wet or it might start raining after four hours of racing. And to be able to have a kind of fast rolling, dry kind of tire, which also works fairly well in the mud, that's really good. And finally, and most importantly for me, in the seven years I've been using them, they've proved to be incredibly reliable. I think I've had maybe five punches on the snakeskin version in the last seven years, so that is really good. Sadly, I think they now have been discontinued and replaced with the newer version of the Racing Ralph, which I'm yet to try, but I'm hoping to squirrel away a few of the old pairs just in case the new Racing Ralph isn't as good as the old one. Nearly every rider has a favourite set of clipless pedals, and without a doubt, mine are Shimano, which I've used for around 10 years now. My current favourites are a well-worn set of Durace pedals which I bought way back in 2015. And despite trying a few different sets on and off for the last few years, I keep coming back to those Shimanos. The pedal platform is nice and wide, they feel really stable and they have remained absolutely play-free for the last four years. Coupled with the cleats which are easy to walk in and come in a variety of different float options, they are again a product I don't see myself changing from anytime soon. It's also worth mentioning that I've used 105, Ultegra and Durace Shimano pedals and bar the obvious difference in weight, in terms of their feel and performance, they feel exactly the same. So you don't necessarily need to go super high end to get really good pedals when you go for Shimano. The only thing that lets them down slightly is they are not the lightest pedals out there, but they are a fit and forget product and that is exactly what I'm looking for in a set of pedals. I know it's not cool to admit it, but I love tracking my wattage numbers, whether I'm training and racing, and seeing those hard fought improvements gives me a real buzz. I've been fortunate enough to try out loads of different power meters during my five years of bike radar, but one which really stands out is Rotor's two in power mountain bike power meter, which you can fit with one of their Q rings. To start with, it's a true dedicated left and right leg power meter, meaning that you can get a really good idea of which leg is stronger. 
So for example, I now know that my left leg is 2.5% stronger than my right and I can do things in training or at the gym to hopefully make that better. It's also been incredibly consistent with the numbers it's produced throughout the many hundreds of hours I've used it for training and racing. I do most of my hard training on a select number of hills and yet yeah, I've done hundreds of repeats of them and despite that the road to turn power has never thrown up any unusually high or low wattage readings. Accuracy compared to other power meter brands? Well I'd say the turn power reads slightly high compared to an SRM or a Quark that I've used in the last couple of years so you do have to factor that into account if you're going to switch between power meter brands but the consistency is spot on and that's what really counts for me. It is heavy compared to other power meters on the market, but it is built like a tank. And despite a couple of winters and summers of commuting, training and racing on it, it still works really well. And it's a product I see myself using for a long time to come. Just like Ruben, the last thing on my list isn't a thing, it's not a product, it's a series of events, and that is hill climb season. I've raced five full seasons, which despite being short, they normally only run from September to the end of October, can be incredibly intense and you can race up to four times on a weekend. What do I like about hill climb season? Well, it's a very simple, brutal form of racing. They're normally short time trials ranging from two minutes up to maybe 15 minutes for the longer ones. It's just you and your bike against the clock. And despite it being fairly competitive, if you want to win one of these things, the camaraderie between all the hill climbers is really good because yet yeah, at the end of the day the only person you're racing is yourself. They're also fairly accessible for the time crunch cyclist so if you've got a local hill climb the chances are it's only going to take a couple of hours out of your day on a weekend and for someone that's busy with things like family or any kind of commitments that's really good. And they're also fairly cheap to enter. I think the most expensive one I've done all year is around 20 to 18 pounds for the national championships all the other open events that you do they're anywhere from 8 to 10 pounds so yeah compared to the price of some events it is really cheap finally it's also really good fun trying to make your bike as light as possible obviously Ruben and I have been very lucky and we've been able to build incredibly high-end super spec bikes that are really light you kind of get them down to about five kilos some people even dip under that and get to around 4.5 kilos. You need to get the drill out for that. But yeah, it's really good fun kind of trying to make your bike as light as possible within the budget you have available to you. 2019 National Championships are going to be held on a much longer climb. I think around 12 minutes for the win probably. I'll be looking at a bit longer than that. But yeah, I've never raced the Nationals on a long climb, so that's something I'm really looking forward to doing. And I'd thoroughly recommend, no matter what type of rider you are, that you should try hill climbing at least once. That's why I started, and since then, I've been bitten by the bug, and it's something I really enjoy and really look forward to every year. So, there's my list. As always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.